Welcome to orbital hybridization. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what hybrid orbitals are and how they explain the shape of molecules. Let's take a look at the molecule for methane, CH4. The Lewis structure for methane is carbon with four hydrogens coming off, one in every direction. And we know that each of these bonds is identical to each other, both from making a model and from the fact that it is a symmetrical molecule. So these bonds look identical because they are in fact identical. However, what we know so far about atomic orbitals would suggest otherwise. So what do I mean by this? If we look at carbon's electron configuration, we know that carbon has six electrons. So it has a 1s sublevel, it has a 2s sublevel, and it has a 2p sublevel. If we go through and fill in the six electrons that carbon has, we're going to see the 1s is full, the 2s is full, and two single electrons, unpaired electrons, in the 2p sublevel. Of course, each hydrogen in this molecule uh, only has one electron, so each hydrogen is in, has a single electron in the 1s sublevel. So with this configuration, how is carbon even going to bond four other atoms when it only has two electrons available for bonding? So one of the 1s electrons, this one in particular, is going to be promoted and we're going to have four single electrons available for bonding. So here we are, they're all spread out now. We have one in the 2s and three in the 2p sublevel. However, we know that an s sublevel, like the 2s sublevel for carbon, has a spherical shape like this, whereas the p sublevel is a dumbbell shape like this. This is s, this is p. A bond made with an s sublevel should look different than the three bonds made using the 2p sublevel. But we know that's not true, that doesn't happen. One of these bonds is not different from the other three just because the electrons in an s orbital instead of a p. But clearly these have different shapes, so it should be a different bond. So something else must be happening. That something else is called hybridization. You may have heard the word hybrid before, which is at the root of hybridization, uh, like hybrid cars. They're a mix of gas and electric. So with hybridization, what we're doing is we're creating hybrid orbitals. And just like a hybrid car is a mix of different fuel types, a hybrid orbital is a mix of different types of orbitals. So in this case, we're going to be talking about mixing the s orbital and the p orbital uh, to form a hybrid orbital. And what does this look like? Well, the carbon becomes, well, it still has a 1s, that's not going to change. And we still have the second energy level with four orbitals, except that they're not s and p anymore. They've been mixed. And there was one s orbital and three p orbitals, so we call them sp3 hybrid orbitals. Each one of these four is an sp3 hybridized orbital. So instead of having one orbital s and three p orbitals, we now have four equivalent orbitals. Each one is 75% p in character and 25% s because it was one to three before. So we have 25% s and 75% p in these hybrid shaped orbitals. And now each one of these hybrid orbitals has one electron in it to form four equivalent bonds as we see in this model of methane. So if you know the Lewis structure of a molecule, you can determine the correct hybridization that's taking place in that molecule. Let's look at boron trifluoride, BF3. We know the Lewis structure for this, I'm just going to do it quickly, is going to be boron surrounded by three fluorine atoms. Let's look at the configuration for boron. Boron has a filled 1s sublevel. It also has a 2s that's filled. And then in the 2p sublevel, there's just one electron. Now again, this is the way we would normally fill in the electron configuration for boron. However, for this molecule, boron needs three equivalent bonds. So we're going to see some hybridization of the boron orbitals. And because I need three hybrid orbitals, 
this 2s, this one 2s orbital, is going to mix with two of the p orbitals to give me a total of three hybrids. So I have 1s, here's my electrons there. I'm going to have three equivalent 2sp2 hybridized orbitals. And then my remaining 2p orbital, that's really not going to be involved for this molecule. And then the electrons spread out here and I can form my bonds with the three fluorine atoms. So we say that the bonds in this molecule are sp2 hybridized. So now I'm going to show a couple example molecules and show how to very quickly figure out the hybridization of those molecules. So here are the two molecules we just looked at, methane and boron trifluoride. We already know that one should be sp3 and one should be sp2 because we looked at the reasoning behind it. Now the quick way of determining the hybridization of any molecule is to count two things that are on the central atom. So we're counting the number of bonded atoms and the number of lone pair electrons that show up in the Lewis structure. So what does this look like? For methane, we have these four hydrogens bonded to it. And here's how I'm going to count them. S, P, 2, 3. So this is S, P, 3 hybridized. For boron trifluoride, there are three fluorine atoms and no lone pairs that I need to count. So I'm going to count S, P, 2. So my hybridization is S, P, 2 hybridized. Let's look at some more examples. So let's start with C2H4 up in the top right here. These carbons in this molecule are mirror images of each other, so I just need to figure out the hybridization for one of them, and that would be the hybridization for the other one. So let's use this carbon as my central atom. There are no lone pairs on this carbon there is three atoms connected to it, hydrogen, hydrogen, and carbon. So I'm going to count S, P, 2. So this carbon is SP2 hybridized. Let's look at the water molecule down here on the left. The oxygen is a central atom. It does have lone pairs I need to account for. So this is a lone pair. That's S, P, 2, 3. SP3 hybridized. For this sulfur hexafluoride, this looks a little bit strange, but recall that sulfur is one of those exceptions. It has an expanded octet, so it can have more than four bonds, more than eight valence electrons. And the hybridization explains why. And again, I'm going to count. There are no lone pairs here, so I'm just going to count fluorines. S, P, 2, Three. Now P only goes up to 3, so after P I have to go to D. D, 2. So that was S, P, 2, because that's the second P, the third P, and then I'm done with P sublevel, so I have to go to the D sublevel, and then the second D orbital that gets hybridized into that. So S, P, 3, D, 2 hybridization. S, P3, D2 hybridization for sulfur hexafluoride. That wraps up our lesson on orbital hybridization. Any questions you have, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.